Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world tuning in. Uh, thank you for joining me uh, for episode 21, 21 of A Voice from the Ever Change. Uh, yeah, it's uh, going to unfold in much the same way as uh, the other episodes have uh, previously. I will uh, ring the bell. I'll guide a meditation, just a basic mindfulness meditation. We'll go through the breath, noting the sensations of the body, and we'll extend our awareness to any sounds which might be happening during the meditation. So we use that time to cultivate a sense of uh, groundedness and a sense of um, uh, coming into the present moment. So you might notice that there's this quality of silence there in the present moment, and we'll rest in that silence. And in that silent space, we'll rest for maybe a breath, two breaths, maybe five breaths. And then I'll offer a poem uh, that I composed. This is from my book entitled A Voice from the Ever Change. And then shortly after the poem, I'll read the commentary also from the same book. Now, if you're following along uh, with the book, I've been mailing them out uh, to, to many, many people who've asked for them. I'm, uh, I'm glad to receive those emails and I'm glad to send out the PDFs. Uh, this is the last poem of chapter two, uh, the chapter on resting. So if you're following along, that's the one to go to. It starts uh, with the heart of creation, like that. So if you're scrolling through, I've skipped ahead a bit. And um, after I read the poem and the commentary, I usually just uh, talk, say a few words about what might be on my mind or happening with me uh, these days. A little bit of advice maybe, or words of wisdom that might help uh, when we're um, dealing with the coronavirus or being in a lockdown situation or a quarantine situation. Um, so I, I try to offer a little bit of guidance for that as well. And that's all improvised. There's nothing scripted about that. Uh, so it might just be a few words or it might be a 10 minute uh, riff on that theme. By the way, if there are any questions that arise for you all uh, watching this, uh, do send them over uh, via Messenger or in the comments there. I'll be hosting a Q&A session on Sunday evening at this same time. And speaking of time, uh, next week we're moving the time of the show uh, to uh, 1 p.m. in Thailand, uh, which is 11 p.m on the Pacific coast of America, or I believe that's 2 a.m. on the east coast of America. So for all of you uh, night owls there on the east coast in uh, at New York or Atlanta, Florida, and so forth, uh, you might be tuning in over your late night uh, experience. Okay, I'll ring the bell and I'll uh, guide us into silence, offer the poem and the commentary. Allow to the poem and the commentary to serve as an extension of the guided meditation practice. Uh, allow the words to guide your awareness wherever your awareness may want to go. Enjoy. allowing the body, mind, and heart to rest. It's coming into this present moment experience. Noticing the breath as it enters and leaves the nose. You might notice a cool or a dry sensation at the nostrils or Perhaps simply noticing the temperature changing from cooler to warmer as you inhale and exhale. Noticing the breath, 
touching the back of the throat. There might be a dry or a tingling sensation there. Noticing the rib cage expanding and contracting with each breath. There might be sensations of clothing moving to adjust across the abdomen, chest, and shoulders as you inhale and exhale. And you might also notice the back moving out as you breathe in and in as you breathe out. And as you inhale and exhale, you might also notice the body straightening up slightly on the in-breath and leaning forward slightly on the out-breath. And so we'll rest right there just for a few moments, resting with the experience of breathing, sensations arising from the nose to the abdomen, the abdomen to the nose. If at any time during the practice you find you're distracted by your thoughts, you can label those thoughts with the word thinking, which will allow the thoughts to dissolve, gently return back to the present moment. And now while resting in the experience of breathing, you might also notice sensations of clothing against the shoulders. Noticing the arms resting against the body, the hands resting against the body or touching each other. There might be sensations of clothing against the back. the weight of the body against the chair or cushion, mat or floor. You might notice sensations of clothing against the legs, the feet against the mat or the floor. And while resting in the experience of breath and body, there might be sensations arising from the back of the neck, the sides of the neck. Noticing any sensations arising from the head and the ears. allowing awareness to move through the cheeks of the face, noticing any sensations arising from the face, including the lips, the nose and the eyes, awareness expanding through the forehead, resting attention back at the top of the head, noticing any sensation arising from the crown of the head. And so we'll rest right there just for a few moments, maintaining open, spacious awareness on the sensations of the breath, from the nose to the abdomen, the abdomen to the nose, and sensations arising throughout the body, from the top of the head to the bottoms of the feet. And just rest, breathing in and breathing out. And now while resting in the experience of breath and body, 
allowing awareness to expand again. Include any sounds which might be available during this present moment experience. Depending where you are, you might notice the sound of a breeze or birds singing. There might be the sound of crickets or perhaps a car or two passing by. Perhaps you can hear a neighbor's television. We don't need to focus on any one sound in particular, but noticing the entire field of sound. Hearing all of the sounds all at the same time. As if we were listening to the universe orchestrate the soundtrack of the present moment. And in addition to the sounds, paying close attention to the quality of still silence within this present moment. When we listen to this silent space, we might notice how this silence seems to surround each sound. And so we'll rest right there, maintaining open, spacious awareness on the sensations of the breath, the body, silence and sound, and just rest, breathing in and breathing out. The poem. From the heart of creation springs the river of love. In between the shores of compassion and wisdom, it flows. Each flower we admire, each tear that falls, each sunrise we revel in, every lover's call may gently guide us back to the source, to our love, to ourselves, to the heart of creation. The Commentary The very act of giving birth to an idea, a thought, a philosophy, a song, a poem, a relationship, or a human being is an act of love. Indeed, the end result might not reflect the love which inspired the creation, as an impulse of love can get horribly distorted through the ego as it travels from the silent space of creativity through the human heart, mind, and body. Regardless of this unfortunate tendency, though, at the very point of inception, it is always love. The practice of meditation may allow one to cultivate the awareness and attention required to rest in that creative spark. Allowing the mind, body, and heart to rest, we may begin to inhabit the exact point 
from which all things arise. We may begin to reside within the very ictus of creation. As we rest in the body, we allow for the sensations to pass through our body, free from desire, clinging, craving, and aversion. If desire does arise, for example, Recognize that as a reaction to the passing sensations and come back to the resting. That resting places the body in the river of flowing creative love. As we rest in the mind, we are allowing the thoughts to flow through awareness uninhibited without a trace of, I want this or I don't want that. That is the very womb of creation. As we rest in the heart, we allow for feelings and emotions to come and go like migratory birds in the autumn, thus placing our heart in between the shores of compassion and wisdom. Rest right there. At this point of inception, there is nothing to strive towards. Just rest. There is nothing to be distracted by. Just rest. There is nothing to entertain. Just rest. There is nothing to work at. Just rest. There is nothing to be. Just rest. There is nothing not to be. Just rest. There is nothing to cling to and nothing to push away. There is only resting. And when you see a beautiful flower, allow that flower to be a colorful reminder. An orchid can serve as a mindfulness bell if you allow it to. The vibrant reds, yellows, purples, and oranges may bring you back to the present moment and thus back to resting. Why not? The difference between the flower and the meditation bell is only in your mind. And when you are grieving a loss, allow the pain of the broken heart to bring you back to the resting. For what is the difference between the sound of monks chanting and the sound of your own weeping? From the resting, you may notice that your suffering is not personal. All beings suffer in the same way. We all suffer from wanting the present moment to be different than what it is. With this realization, we unite with all beings, compassionate suffering. When, it, when admiring a sunset, allow the interpretation of beauty to guide you back to that silent resting. For what is the difference between the golden colors of a sunset and the colors of the temple gates? Allow the magnificent beauty to guide your heart back to the resting. From there, gratitude may flow forth recognizing the enormous gift of the human nervous system, which generously allows one to experience the gift of lush sunsets and revere temples alike. The voice of your beloved 
rises up out of the silence to greet your welcoming ears. Is there really any difference between the sa that sound and the sound of angels? Or the out-of-tune karaoke destroying the great works of the Beatles? Between the sound of waterfalls and the screaming babies? Is there any difference between the bird song and a child's fingernails against a chalkboard? When we free ourselves from the burden of judgment, each experience of sound may be a direct guide back to our heart, back to our source, back to the silent space, the very heart of creation. So thank you for, for allowing me to share that with you all. I hope uh, you found that beneficial. And so now, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'd just like to uh, say a few words. And I guess uh, what I'd really like to say is kind of a congratulations in a way, or a word of celebration. There's so much awful, awful news uh, happening these days, and I know we're all aware of that. You'd have to, you'd have to really, really be living in solitude not to be aware, right, of what's happening. But what I, I read on the news today is that uh, the many of the world powers, the UN, China, the U.S., Russia. Uh, Spain, Italy, they're all calling for a ceasefire for all military activity uh, during the corona pandemic, the COVID virus pandemic. Uh, that's amazing. <laughs> and I think it's worth mentioning and I think it's worth celebrating. Y you know, that so they put the guns down, right? There's silence on the front line and eventually this virus you know there's a uh, eventually there's a uh, vaccine and we get it under control the social distancing works and then they go back to the battlefield and why you know <laughs> what's the point maybe nobody will show up they say okay let's go back to war and the soldiers say you know what nah it's better like this. <laughs> but what a great thing, you know, what a great, uh, what a great moment in history when we recognize that the, the enemy is not each other. And just because they worship a different God or have a different political ideology or a different economic uh, system, we don't we don't have to be afraid. They're humans like, like we are. We all want the same thing. We all want to be happy. and We want to avoid suffering. And so putting down the guns and, and using the military dollar to create respirator systems and to manufacture more masks and to put the funding into creating this uh, much, much needed vaccine. 
the world coming together against uh, this common enemy of a virus. That's beautiful. So I, I know that's, that's rather optimistic and that's me. I'm, I tend to be rather optimistic. Uh, but, I, but I think that that could be an entryway into something really wonderful. And it's worth celebrating the, the small successes on the path to world peace. Now, I just mentioned world peace and probably people's ears and eyes closed. They turn me off. <laughs> But it's interesting, I was thinking about world peace today after reading this and thinking about the song Imagine by John Lennon, great anthem for world peace. And it reminded me when I was going through the lyrics in my mind, it reminded me of uh, the loving kindness practice that's so popular that I, I teach and I, that I love to do in my own practice where we imagine what our life would look like if we were happy, perpetually happy, if we were perpetually healthy, if we were perpetually living life in peace. And then we offer that to the world and, and to everyone else, and we imagine what their life would look like. That's exactly what John Lennon was asking us to do. He wasn't saying that, you know, this could happen today or tomorrow. But he was asking us to imagine what the world would look like beyond belief systems. He mentions no religion, no political ideologies, no heaven or hell, no material wealth. And to, to imagine a brotherhood of man living in life, living life rather, in peace. That's metta. That's loving kindness practice. We imagine what that would look like and feel like. And when we can really imagine that, we can really feel that, that's the spark. We drop that spark into that silent space, into that heart of creation. We recognize how good it would feel to live life that way. And so we naturally want to bring it out of the world of imagination and into the world of reality. That's the heart of creation. And so I think that's all I want to say this episode, episode 21 of A Voice from the Ever Change. Uh, we are in the river of ever change. Now it's flowing very rapidly. Uh, so let's rest in that. And by the way, the resting practice that I recommend is available on my website. It's free, uh, www.suchsweetthunder.org. It's not my practice. I, it's, uh, it was given to me I studied it when I studied uh, when I'm during my studies in Tibetan meditation. It's a traditional Dzogchen practice, but I teach completely secular. You don't have to be a Buddhist. You don't have to be any faith, atheist or agnostic or Protestant or Jewish or uh, uh, Islam or Buddhist, Hindu, Muslim doesn't matter. Uh, the the way I teach serves any faith or all faith or no faith. So the practice is there. I really recommend uh, good, diving into a resting practice. I think they're tremendously beneficial, uh, particularly uh, serves uh, the current state of the world, which is why I keep bringing it up. And I love this practice too. I think it's, it's really one of my favorite things to do. I mean, when, when my teacher said, oh, you can rest all your way to, you can rest, rest all the way to enlightenment, I said, sign me up. That's me. <laughs> I like resting. 
Okay, that's it. I'm done with my ramble. I'll see you all tomorrow for episode 22. Uh, same bat time, same bat channel. And we'll see you there. Oh, do do your social distancing. Two to three meters apart, wear your masks. Uh, wash, wash, wash your hands, sanitize with 70% alcohol. Stay safe. Uh, lots of love. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.